The following is a pre recorded show. Welcome to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers, certified financial planner professional and founder of Akers Financial Group. Now, helping you win in your retirement, here's Brian Akers. Welcome to Winning in Retirement. I'm your host, Brian Akers, president and founder of Akers Financial Group. Welcome to Saturday Morning and Winning in Retirement Radio. Here with me today is Alex Monk from Akers Financial Group. He's a certified financial planner, um, practitioner, and here today to talk with me about many, many subjects. Good morning, Alex. Brian, it's good to be here. I'm glad you're able to get here for today for us, that it's going to be a good day. I'm glad you weren't playing different games and things. I'm glad that you're here. I, I mean, I am too, yes. Yeah. Um, the game, I love playing games. I love pickleball, golf, whatever. Sign me up. You love pickleball? <laughs> I do. It's it's like ping pong, but ping pong with standing up. <laughs> athletic, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you get to sweat a little bit, right? Yeah, it's uh, not that bad, but not a ton of movement. All right, the show is called Winning in Retirement, and we're going to talk about a game. But the reason I want to talk about the topic that I that we created for today is the following: I had a client come in this week, and he's referred a bunch of different people, and we started talking about. it. I said, "Thank you very much for referring um, those people from your office here." And he goes, "Well, you know." They just don't know. And I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, when we're working on our finances and saving for our retirement, it's, it's like we're playing checkers and you guys play chess. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, well, that's what it is. I mean, they're doing the basics. You guys are thinking so far ahead of us that just a little bit of help gets us in a way that we've never been before. So you've been able to help the people that, he's, that he has sent here. It was like a major compliment, I thought. It's always fun to see people's eyes light up when they're like, oh, I didn't know that was an option. Oh, I can do that. And then, then like the reality of, oh, I could never do that to the reality of, oh, how do I do that? And oh, yeah, I can do that. Oh, it's not as hard as I thought it was. Let's get going. And then I can reach these goals that I thought were unattainable is really the cool thing. And so what we're doing is we're putting together a show and the show is going to be talking about playing chess, not checkers. You really need to think about, are you putting all your financial decisions together for the same goal? Or are they just doing things day by day, doing thing as, things as they come, doing one thing at a time without understanding your full picture, without understanding your short-term, your long-term goals? Play chess, not checkers. That's the name of the show. We'll be talking about this throughout the day, applying financial planning to help you win in your retirement years. So we're not going to really play games, just going to talk about the concept of thinking a game through, thinking ahead. Right. So like you've, you've heard like the retirement game, the spending game, it, it we take it seriously. I mean, we mm -hmm. try to have a little fun with it, but it's it's the game for the rest of your life. Like it's an important one to win. <laughs> well, the hard part is some people will just start out their financial career, their work career, not even thinking about they're in a game. They don't, even, they don't even know they're in the game or a game. They just think, oh, I got to get some money for Friday night or whatever. Right. I mean, how far ahead do most people plan? I mean, is it 50 when most people show up at your door? I mean, I, uh, I get people at weird times. So it's, well, what happens is there is a triggering point in life that makes people call our phone line. That point might be, oh, my, my friends are retiring and I don't think I can. And then there's the, oh, my grandfather told me to get in here early. And that's a young, young person comes in right away. We get going. It's pretty fun to guide them. Then you have people who, uh, it's like they get to a fed up point. They just don't know what to do. And then there's ones that their life's so busy, they need someone to help them do it. They know they need it done. They just got to do it. Or the, I don't want that to happen to my family. Yes. Especially when you're a sandwich between parents and kids and all of a sudden, your parents aren't on their own anymore. you got to take care of certain things. You go to their house, you dig through all the files, and you try to realize what they've done and where the money is. It's like, oh, I don't need, I don't want to do this to my family. And so you end up going back trying to fix everything. It's like, well, is that why that bald guy at Acres keeps telling me to get my legal documents done? Like, oh, you're talking about yourself, aren't you? That's me. Yeah, yeah. like I'm hounding you for that exact reason. <laughs> All right. So, so Alex Monk is here uh, as a certified financial planner. So we truly like financial planning. And that is a concept where you talk about goals and you talk about what's going on in your life. We happen to call it your financial fingerprint, where you start, where everything is organized, 
We help you with that. We help you organize what's going on so that you can go from just playing a, a basic game of checkers to understanding how to play chess with your finances, how to think through and think ahead, think of every component that can affect that next move that you're making. And those moves are important, right? Because like a decision you make today, like it can be huge in 10 years. It can be even bigger in 20 and massive in 30. So like the exponential growth of you know money, it's the same thing with decisions. All right. So tell me about the ages of clients you've met with over the last few weeks. What, what kind of age range are the people that you talk to? I mean, I think I've talked to somebody just switching jobs in their late 30s, early okay. 40s, so picking benefits, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, some end of life stuff, yeah. uh, which is a little, you know, interesting. But then I'm talking to people that are in their 50s talking about parents that are 80s, 90s. Yeah. So it's, the sandwiches, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's yeah. all kinds of different stuff. I had this one guy, he's 33, and he um, first came when he was 18. Now he's got three kids and everything. And we're looking at the Ross we did when he was 18, how they're worth over $140,000. It's <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, that's awesome. I said, it is absolutely awesome. People come in their mid-30s to start all the time. You've got a big jump. That big jump was because he took some money at a younger age and truly invested it using tax-free vehicles and made a decision that helped him while he was single and will help his family because in life, it's a a tough life in the fact that when you're in your 20s, you have the most money and most of the time people spend every dime of it enjoying their 20s so much that they have to work the rest of their life. If we do the reverse, save some money in your 20s, you don't have to work the rest of your life. It's It's a nice little combo. It's so hard to see that when you're 20. I mean, oh, you don't want to hear from anybody you know. Maybe you're driving you're driving down the road now, and you're in your 20s. You're thinking, oh, that sounds just like my grandfather telling me that. Well, the reality is, the reason people give you some advice and they give you this long term thinking it through advice is the fact they've lived through it and they know what they should have done now because it's now too late for them to fix it, and so they want to help you avoid the mistakes you, that you make. Just like any good coach is going to do that for you. They're going to say, hey, don't go this way. Don't dribble the basketball into the corner. On golf, uh, there are certain t- tips that you wouldn't give them, right, Alex? Hey, don't hit it behind the tree. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> that. That's recommended, right? Not to hit it behind the tree. Keep it simple, all right? So you got to start somewhere. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I had a client that uh, reached out to me this week and sent me this article and he's like, where were you guys 20 years ago when I should have been reading all this stuff? And yeah. I'm like, you know, that's the thing. And, and he's out there trying to tell his, you know, family, younger generations, hey, you should meet with someone. I know you think you know everything right now, but you don't. So the reality is that people want to be savers, but they don't want to do the work it takes to become a saver. And so they need help. That needing help is when you ask for help from a financial advisor. They can guide you, and they'll do a lot of the nitty-gritty things. They'll help you go through what you already own and what's available to you and help you maximize where you are today to help you get started. It's like, how do you how do you start? you got to have the first dollar, and then it grows from there. And we can get as far into any amount of details as people want. I usually... Judge by the client, right? Like the fingerprint. Yep. Everybody's a little different on details. When their eyes start rolling back and they're like, stop. <laughs> yeah, I I love tax planning. I love Roth conversions. I like designing the income flow to match what they need and pay at the least amount of tax. And I don't mind doing it at a later stage when, I, when I, it's almost like they're brand new clients and all of a sudden I got to do it right away. But then most of the time I think, well, I wish they had come in earlier and I could have designed it their whole life to be exactly what I want, which is buckets of money, buckets of tax-free, some money pre-tax, maximize their match their whole life, out of debt, have the, the right properties bought and purchased and, and ready and designed right with a trust or estate plan done, having it all together over a lifetime. That's why financial planning is truly for a lifetime. It's not just for that moment of stress. It's not just for a one-time stop in, and it's never one product that's going to fix your financial life. It's the whole concept of financial advice. Many of us love to watch the markets and watch certain stocks, so much so the short-term view, you'll miss the entire view of your financial plan. 
you really need to take time and understand that it is playing chess, not checkers. Yeah, and having a third party come in and look at everything, like we see things from the top down, right? I, I, I want to see everything and how it all plays together. And like you just said, most people are stuck on one thing. What, what's yeah. on the news today? What dropped 20%? What's up? Yeah, that's the, the thing that gets people's attention. Some some clients are truly swayed by everybody they talk to. And then they'll call in and say, oh, well, they said to do this. Like um, the report that came out last quarter says this was the best fund. Why shouldn't I be, be in that? And it's it's like um, it's not really thought through with the planning and the, the idea of how planning fits in as different basically team members in a whole team that all work together to reach the goal. And trying to get um, people to understand that how it would work together and then have an advisor they can trust to do it for them. Right. And then people are out there like, well, how, how do I even know what, where to start with investing? The answer is planning. Like that's the answer. Your life will tell us how to invest your money. Our show is called winning in retirement. And we want you to win in your retirement years for everyone. Winning's different. It could be something that you could look forward to when retirement could be, you're not really looking forward to it because you don't want to stop your job. And so I call it winning if you're able to do your job with the amount of hours that you want. You have the right balance in life. Sometimes people have made mistakes in their short-term past, and they are going to spend years getting out of that hole they're in. There's lots of things you need to think about when it comes to making your financial planning work best for you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes if you show people the math, like with credit card interest, how much that pair of shoes really costs them. And they're like, what? Uh, oh, here's a retail card. Why don't you put it on there? Okay, you got 30% off and 30% interest. So these shoes were how much? Yeah. All right. So today we're talking about playing chess, not checkers, and applying that to financial planning. Um, the reason we do that is because we want you to understand, um, don't take it for granted what you're trying to do. Um, don't wait to do something that's going to apply to your situation to make it better. Doing the work will make your financial life better. We work so we can achieve um, the financial goals in life. Make sure you're doing it in the right way. At Acres Financial Group, we're local. We're independent. We don't report to a big company on Wall Street. We report to you. We do have offices in Lutherville and Varsdale and clients all around the country and even a few around the world. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. Just give us a call and schedule your free meeting with one of our team of advisors by calling 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting. Go to agresfinancialgroup.com or call us at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. Financial independence leads to winning in retirement. We will explain in a moment. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group. Here with me today is Alex Monk, also from Akers Financial Group. He is a financial planner, a financial uh, stockbroker, investment advisor representative, um, certified financial planner. Just certified. Like practitioner. Yeah. Practitioner. You keep practicing is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Practice. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. That's the way it is. The The thing about this is this. We put together our, our shows and we come up with names for them tied to what we want to get across. And so this week we came up with the name Playing Chess, Not Checkers. Because of a client, the client came in and said that, hey, when I'm telling other people about you, that I tell them that they think differently at Acres Financial Group. They are playing chess when we are playing checkers, and you need to go see them. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to use that on my show. And the reason I'm going to use it is trying to explain the difference between trying to check the right boxes and do one thing at a time on your own versus having someone, a financial advisor, help you make the long-term decisions and bring them all in to your exact right answer. It's like when you're out there doing it on your own, you're out there trying to figure out the rules to this brand new game, right? Mm -hmm. This game that you've been playing for a long time, I hate to say it. <laughs> 1987. <laughs> That, that is a year, 87 is a year. Yeah, so you've been doing it. You, yeah. you know the rules. And, and the thing about retirement is the rules change all the time. And as they change and change quickly, you have to pivot and make decisions differently. 
You just can't keep doing what you've been doing and expect to get a better result. Absolutely. You have to be able to pivot with these things. And we have to do the same thing with our company in the fact that we can't say, oh, well, back in the day, we used to buy this, and that's the answer. At every month, every week, as something we got to look at and see how that affects our portfolios, how it affects how we implement financial planning. And it's constantly changing. That's the thing is we have to stay on top of it. It's not like uh, uh, you come in, you get your knee fixed, and you're, you know. Yeah. You're, and it glued. You're, you're yeah. good, right? Or like new tires on your car. That's not how retirement works. Like it's not a. No, it's it's harder. It's like um, having good habits. It's like waking up early and doing the right things like you need to do every day because it's better for you spiritually, financially, healthy wise. Doing all those things are better for you, for you to eat right. All those things will make your life better down down the road. Financial planning, we want you to think about things. We want you to play chess, not checkers. Now, this quarter, second quarter of winning in retirement, we're covering financial independence leads to winning in retirement. Now, when you think about financial independence, Alex, what are your thoughts? Um, where I can tell a client that you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. Well, I mean, yeah, as far as work goes. Okay. Um, obviously, you're going to have to pay taxes and... <laughs> life has stuff you don't want to do, but you have enough money, you have enough resources, we know where everything is, that you're going to be okay. You're not relying on anyone else right now. Right, because they work because they choose to. Yeah. And because they might want to, they might enjoy it, and they might have other goals that might not involve just meeting their basic needs in retirement. They just want to make some money for just a few other things or whatever else is going on. Or maybe it's not about the money at that point. That's, I believe, true financial independence when it's not about the money. It's because you love what you're doing. And then the value, you start to put different values on things, right? So once you know, like, the money doesn't become this you know, thing that's over your shoulders, like, you know, like a, a burden thing, it's a, okay, what is really important to me? Is it, is it my family? How do I put a value on that? And then it gets really interesting to see how it changes. The comment I want to bring up is the idea of you need – the listener needs to become the first person in their family to be financially successful. That means you got to change some of the habits that it might be what you're used to. And you have to become a saver, which is different than everyone else, than the way everyone else is doing it. That means you might get made fun of what car you're driving because you might have kept the car longer than normal person might keep. I, I hate, hate the word normal. Well, let's What's say, normal? Well, usually failing financially is normal in America because we spend all the money, we have high debt, and then we have to work a lot just to meet our minimums, and we really spend 20 years like like a duck on a duck paddle on its legs underwater, getting nowhere. Yeah, but as long as you look good, right? <laughs> uh, it can be a yeah. That's what matter? it. That's what people care about, and it that really doesn't matter. Well, some people make a lot of money and they look good because they spend it, and it looks good. The fact is, when they walk in, they're not really the very best financial planning client because they don't even know where to begin saving. And they don't really want to give anything up in the short term for that long term. They just figure it's going to work out. Right. Well, I make a lot of money. That, like I've heard that statement so many times. Oh, and yeah. and I, I'm like, <laughs> look, I know, I understand how math works, but yeah. you've created a, a, a lifestyle here. Uh, yeah, I, ha I had one. <laughs> I had one a few years ago, and you were involved with a, with a couple, and they made like $300,000 a year, and they're I'm retiring next year. I said, all right, um, have any pensions? No. Are you getting Social Security? Yeah, okay. I wrote down that amount, like 50000 and um And then we started talking about their investments, and we got to like $1 million, $1.4 million. I said, you're not going to live on $300,000. Um, what are you going to change in your lifestyle? We're going to change in your budget now to make this work because there is no other answer. There's no time to grow your money, time to save more. It's just near impossible to reach every goal. I, and I'm pretty sure that it, at 70, if you've been driving a Mercedes your whole life, you can't relearn how to drive a Ford. Right. <laughs> I mean, we've had some, some some crazy cases where when they when people wait too long to do the planning, then you have to make some drastic changes. You've got to downsize where you live. You might not be able to do all the things you do. You might only get to do one or two of the things you dreamed of. Which the opposite is when someone starts earlier and they build and grow and they truly save for something before they buy it. They truly do it with purpose in mind. They know why they're doing it. Then they make wiser long-term decisions that stick and they don't waste their money.
That's my favorite part about financial planning is we, we are able to set up scenarios where the client always drives the bus, mm-hmm. right? Because their plans change. I mean, people are- oh, I thought because they needed a job. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but, not a bad joke. But they're, they're making the decisions, not the other way around. They didn't create a scenario that's forcing them to do anything. That's what I call independence. Well, the sad part about financial independence is we love to all be financially independent and be able to walk out in our own terms, but that's not what everybody gets. The sad part is we get to our mid-50s, and if we're in a mid to larger company, we got to be ready because we don't control our job. We got to be ready with, with emergency funds and money set aside in case we don't get to keep going another five years or seven years. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. And hopefully that buyout package is the, the kicker you wanted to leave, right? That like can, that's- bridge, can bridge you there. And if you're almost there, it's great. But if you haven't done the planning yet and you, you know something might be coming down the road or the first time we hear from people is when they get a package and we have to figure out, are they okay? That's hard situation for us to try to make that money last a lifetime because it's a combination of some tough, pa- tough planning and tough love when it comes to making decisions on what to do. And that's how I've gotten phone calls just for that very reason, right? Mm-hmm. Someone that sits next to them at work, especially COVID, everything was going crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they got a package and they're like, Alex, I, what if this happens to me? Yep. What does this look like? <laughs> it's like, okay, let's, just, let's see. Yeah, so financial independence, we, we love financial independence. The idea is when you know that you have saved enough, things are organized and ready for you to go anytime you want, and you get to choose your exit, that's the best way to do financial planning. Now, the younger you start, the more likely you'll have that day of financial independence. So start now. Start small. Start with something. You don't have to have a lot of money to get started. Um, the more you start with, of course, that's going to be able to grow into larger numbers because you start with a, a bigger, um, I was going to say cake, but that's not really the right word. So, so I was, you and I were together this week and uh, the, guy, the client asked us a question um, about withdrawal rates. Yeah. And he said, well, does that math still apply if the starting number is bigger? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, just because your number is bigger to start, if your math is flawed, it's flawed. That's the whole thing. A few years ago, it was like uh, the four the four percent rule doesn't work in retirement, and then there's the articles about three percent not working. Now that interest rates have finally go up, now is it a five percent rule? Is it a six percent rule? And then reality, some people come in with taking out nine ten percent a year, and they don't like to hear that their income has to go down because it's not going to last for twenty five year retirement. Well, that's a good debt, Alex. Uh, I, I deduct that interest. That's what I, someone told me this week. Yeah. And I had to show them on their tax return how that actually functions. Yeah, and how they don't deduct it. <laughs> I mean, you, you used to maybe years yeah. ago, but. Sure. Now, financial independence. A lot of people have people they know. And if you think about it, there's someone that you know that you pattern some of your life after. I mean, it might be a financial life. You might see someone that's successful, someone that's successful in business, successful in career, success, successful in vocation or what they do. And so through life, you start to pattern yourself after them to try to accomplish some of those goals. Now, some of them people become their mentors. I always think you should try, if you identify something you'd like to find out about, go become an intern, work your way up. How, have them mentor you to become what you want to be and to realize if it, that is what you want. But that mentor in life, you have to actually listen to them and to do some of the things to, to be able to accomplish things that they did. And what you'll find if you find someone that's been successful in anything, they have worked hard to get there. It didn't just happen. No, it, it takes work. And, and that's what we were built to do as humans, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we thrive off working. And that's why I think retirement, you got to have your, why am I retired? What am I going to do now? I don't want you to retire to nothing. Let's retire to something. Yeah, because I, I tell people, well. the first year, you're, you're going to be like, how did I ever work? I'm so busy doing yeah. whatever I put off. And that's a great sign. That means they're going to stay active and it's going to be a great retirement time. Right? Within two years, they're, they forgot the, that they used to work. And now they're in a pattern and it's easier. But if you don't have something to do with your time, usually spending money is a result. Sure. And you sitting around in your house, you're looking, oh, that's broken. I need to fix that. I, I need this. And you start creating that list. And then you, all of a sudden you start doing the work. 
All of a sudden, you, you call for more money. Or QVC is on, and one client calls the other client to turn QVC on. It's a whole thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> then the money goes out the door. So the idea is planning ahead can help you become financially independent. I, and independent. At Agris Financial Group, everything we do is going to be about you. Your retirement is as unique as your fingerprint. When you sit down with one of us, we'll start by taking a look at your financial fingerprint. We'll talk about where about you and where you are right now. What is your net worth and how do you invest? How much are you, are you currently earning? Then we'll talk about what you want for your retirement to look like and feel like. That's your retirement fingerprint. Perhaps you've been sold something regardless of whether you needed it or not. Not at Acres Financial Group. With us, your retirement money follows your financial fingerprint. It's a retirement plan based on your unique fingerprint, and that determines where your money goes. It's not about us. It's about you. Give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE and schedule an in-person or Zoom meeting with one of our team of advisors. That's 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-946-7384. And visit our website, acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and schedule a meeting right there. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE or go to acresfinancialgroup.com. Your decisions today create your tomorrow. We'll talk about this in a minute. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers, president and founder of Akers Financial Group, and we welcome you to our show, Winning in Retirement. This show is about winning in your retirement years. So no matter where you are in your financial life, you do need to think about it because you want to be winning when it comes to your retirement. And that starts by getting started. Our show today is called Playing Chess, Not Checkers. If you missed any part of this, you can go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. That's acres, A-K-E-R-S, financialgroup.com. That's the place you want to go there and check us out. Check out our radio tab, our webinars tab, all kinds of information there on our website. And of course, give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE if you'd like to sit down and talk about your situation so we can begin helping you to win in your retirement years. All right, Alex Monk is with me today. Alex Monk is one of our experts on the investment committee. He's also a financial planner um, and he's working with, with me for over 11 years. So We've done a lot, a lot of things together. Um, one of the things that we do are, are public um, programs where we talk to people about financial planning, things like that. Um, today, we're taking some thoughts and things from our talks with clients and, and, and speeches we made just recently and bringing that to you on the radio show through a, a show called Playing Chess, Not Checkers. This, this um, portion, this third quarter, the second half of the show, we're going to cover this first topic, and it's called... Your decisions today create your tomorrow. What are your thoughts about things like this, where decisions today and what that will mean about their tomorrow? And I, it, it's tough, right? Like when you meet someone for the first time and, well, we did this 20 years ago and it was a mistake. Yeah. Or we did this and it's the best thing that we ever did. Now, looking back, it's it's always easy to judge, right? And I tell people, I'm not going to judge you based on what you did before, only on what you do after today, because now you have advice. So I can be held accountable. <laughs> before, you didn't know. Um, but those big decisions, like people, they hear these things like, well, like for example, having a mortgage interest is good. Mm -hmm. But you still have a mortgage payment. Yeah, so that's money out the door. And if you're in investing or retired and you have to live off your money, your investment money have to provide you all that money to make the payment. It's a vicious little cycle gone. Right. So that that's just like this thing that people have ingrained in their minds their whole life, right? Like this is good interest, all et cetera, et cetera. And it turns out that that's probably not true for their overall scenario. Yeah. I, I was thinking about what we were saying and I was thinking that um, some clients are going through things and they say, oh, I did this a long time ago um, and that worked out very well. And I say, well, did you do it again? Oh, oh, no, I didn't. I did something else. And the, th the sad part, one of the habits in life is we do something well, and then we don't typically repeat it. We do something different the next time. Because sometimes we're swayed by what people say to us. We're swayed by other thoughts, other moments in life, other pressures. And we don't stick to what's been working. 
we don't stick to building a plan that meets your actual goals. We, so we think about everyone else but ourselves when it comes to building our financial future. And it's, it's hard to look at your life from like a top down or from a, an unemotional view when you're in it, right? And especially when money's like tied to it and people mm-hmm. get all like, you know, it gets crazy. So having the ability to look at it without that mm-hmm. is huge. We don't want, I don't want to make investment decisions because, you know, whatever, something emotional happened in the family, this, that, or the other, or the market's doing this or that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't care about any of that. That's not why I want to make my decisions. Yeah, I, I. I really want everyone to save first. Hide the money from yourself. Save money with purpose. Put money away. Put money away, and then raise it every time you make more money. Raise the amount of money you save. The hardest part, no matter what you make in life, if you don't save it first, there will be very little left over uh, when it comes to money that flows through your checking. It doesn't stay long. It flows through your checking account. It really, I mean, it does. You have to set it up to pay yourself first Mm -hmm. because you will definitely figure out how to spend it. So I love when people say, okay, my my check, my paycheck goes to multiple accounts. I'm like, "That's, that's a great habit. You're sending money for purposes away and to be set aside for that purpose. That is pop. That is proper planning. That is the right way to build our future. I think it's a great way to make sure you're buying things with the right amount of money, that you're saving what you need to save to reach the goal that you set up. Yeah, and it doesn't all have to be 30, 40 years from now, right? Some of these goals are short term, mm-hmm. like vacations every year. You want to fund those out of saving. You don't want to go into debt for that kind of stuff because that hurts you down the road. Uh, what happens, debt is easy when you're not making a lot of money. And then you just want to have certain things and you can come up with any reason you can think of to why buy. What you got to think about in your mind is what, why not buy? I mean, like, what is my reason not to buy? Am I doing something more important for my long term? If you're saving and putting money away and then there's money left over to buy the thing you have, if you charge it this month, can you pay it off this month? These are habits of good, sound financial management that people need to learn to make this grow. I wish I was just talking about people, younger people with small amounts of money. These are people that might make $800,000 a year that are making large financial decisions, large debts that they're tied in to where they can't retire early like they thought they were going to because their payments are just so high to maintain the life that they've created at the moment. Well, the numbers get big and it, it messes with, with your brain, really. Because mm-hmm. if you think on paper, oh, I make $800,000, right? Right. Someone that makes eighty thinks that's so much money. And then they right. see the actual, oh, this is how much you're bringing home on eight hundred. Yeah. Well, it's like when you think about a, a, a football player, a baseball player signs a huge contract. They get the, all this money at once. And then the reality is, how much really hit their bank account? Was it less than 50%? Probably. Most likely, a lot less. And that's money for their lifetime, not just for this year. Um, the hardest part, if you read stories of people that get sudden money, large lump sums, or um, professional athletes that get a lot of money at once, these are tough decisions when you're landed all this money. You want to buy all these things. The problem, the hard part is having a balance between now and later, now and your long-term future. You want to play chess with that money so that you're always playing this retirement game and living off that money, making the money work for you for the rest of your life, not where you got to keep working for the money. And the lifestyle that you build, like, is it sustainable? So Mm -hmm. like these younger guys are football players, for example, whatever sport. Mm -hmm. If you, if you buy a house that costs you 10 grand a month or just to run, right. And then you break your leg, like, how, do, how do you sell your hat? Like, then you take less than you paid for it, you're a forced seller. Same thing with investing. You can set yourself up for success and failure very easily. Well, it happens because there's things where you're, you might be a first generation of people with money. And you have that money, you got to make the right decisions. Proper advice, good financial planning has to apply. And you got to understand how important it is to plan it before the money comes in and plan it as you keep going. And don't react quickly with your money. You need to create a plan. Did you know that creating and reacting are the same letters? I've heard that and I've 
It, I checked it out. It's true. Yeah. Well, the reality <laughs> is like most people react to their money. They go, oh, I got it. Let's spend it. Let's go. And rather than let's create a plan, let's create something with it. Let's create that future, create that income stream that's going to be there. So I don't have to work as hard in the future. These are all good things. Yeah, I want life to dictate the decisions, not money, right? Money is just a tool. Okay. So what do you mean by that? So money is just a tool to accomplish whatever it is that you, you know, whatever you you believe in or whatever you want to do. Yeah. So basically, I think what I'm hearing is that there are things important in life and it can't lead with just the money decisions, right? Right. If, if money is the reason for all of your decisions, then it's not going to work out great. But if you get paid once a month, you would have a good couple of weeks of what you consider great life because you had a lot of money. And then when you have no money, you would have no life. <laughs> In an extreme example, right? Yeah. <laughs> where, where money's the driver. I want life to be the driver. And then money is just the tool that allows you to accomplish. Right. Well, there's the, the bad habits of wanting or, or um, I get coveting, you know, those words where you want something so badly that you don't really need. And you end up spending money that you shouldn't have spent. And you end up going in debt in debt you should never have had. And all of a sudden it's like, all right, I'm stuck. How do I get out of this? The hardest part in financial planning sometimes is to take a step backwards, reset on your really your long-term goals. Sometimes couples don't ever talk about finance with each other. And that leads to a disaster when it comes to planning together for a retirement for both of them. It's brutal. It's so it's always weird in the, I mean, it's like a first couple of meetings with a yeah. new client couple and, you realize that this is the first time they've talked about this together. Yeah, that, that's that's hard. Sometimes you just got to lean back and listen, let them talk to each other. Yeah, and it's like, okay, well, we're not going to make that decision today. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. You say it that way? Oh, I do. I say, hey, look. Okay. Clearly, we're not going to make that one today. But well, it's one that we need to talk about. We were going down this rabbit trail with this one with one couple, and I, I, I said, well, how about I come back in just a couple minutes? Because <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about... Um, Oh my, I can't remember exactly what they're talking about. I think they're talking about um, the idea of how much the kids would contribute towards college. One had a view of, oh, we're going to cover 100%. The other one's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, I believe you need to have a plan when you're you're going to tell your kids. I think you tell your, kid, tell your kids younger, hey, I expect you to go to college. I expect you to pay something. I expect you to pay a third or half, whatever that number is. Build that into the mindset as they are growing up so that they know oh, trade school is great and wonderful. Go that career. They're doing very successful. Do this, do this. But, but let's think about that future and prepare. Make sure you're academically doing well in eighth grade, ninth grade. So by, by 11th grade, you know you have a good track to do the dreams and do the things you would love to do. And I ask people that question early on when they have kids or you know, as soon as I meet them, like, what are your... Like, what, what are your goals? Like, I don't, there's no right answer. I, mm -hmm. I can tell you what happened with my life, what I've seen. Yeah. And it's your money. You do what you want. But you got to decide that early on. The earlier, the better. The 529s, there's lots of vehicles out there. This last week, I was working on ABLE plans for um, disabled children, uh, helping them to be able to go to different types of schools and to provide for them in their 26 to 46 age range. There's a lot of incredible things out there for people in planning. The reason we're talking today about all this different stuff is we're talking about the idea of playing chess, not checkers, when it comes to your financial planning. We do all of this so that when you are retired, you can realize that the best part of retirement is going to be when you get your time back, when you decide how to use it. Before retirement, your time is tied up with other commitments, you know, mainly your job. A lot of that goes away at retirement. Your time is now consumed by things that you want to do. That's truly winning in retirement. Go to your, our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. That's A-K-E-R-S financialgroup.com. Scroll to the schedule a meeting section and let us know you'd like to have a free meeting with one of our team of advisors. That's acresfinancialgroup.com or call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. What does winning in retirement mean for you? It is different for everyone. We'll explain in a moment. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Indeed, welcome back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers, president and founder of Akers Financial Group, certified financial planner practitioner. 
and then host of Winning a Retirement. Central. That's, yeah, that's Alex Monk on the microphone. Alex Monk is our guest here today, um, co- covering the fourth quarter of playing chess, not checkers. So uh, we didn't disclose this at the beginning of the show, but I don't really know how to play chess. It's a metaphor. You mean the game? You know, financial chess. Oh, that, that's my wheelhouse. Right. So what happens in life? You specialize in, in one thing. You can't specialize in everything. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people believe they can, can be specialists in everything that's out there. And the reality is to be the very best in one thing takes a lot of con- concentrated effort. What? And it also takes like a little humility, right? Like for me, when I come across a case that I haven't seen, I know that you might have or Jeff might have or you know somebody else that we know may have seen this scenario before. I, w- I want to see what other people have done. Absolutely. So the idea of financial planning is that the more you know, the less you know. It's the more you know that you don't know it. Right. It's like, okay. <laughs> but there's so many rules, so many laws, so much information out there, and applying it to everybody is a fun part of financial planning. It's also some of the hard parts. So you say fun, and, and I got me too. Like that's what I, I love it. I, yeah. I absolutely love it. Most people think about it, and they're like, oh no. I like a I like a tough question. I think it's great. The hard part is when um and when it's a simple question, and the client. Um, really doesn't want the answer. They don't like the answer you give them. And it's like, well, this is the answer. There's no other answer. <laughs> well, so I, I, the way that I like to set things up for people is I'll, I'll show you or tell you what either decision you make will result in. Right. I'll give you my opinion. You make the decision. Oh, yeah. Because there's not a right answer. I mean, unless you know the day you're going to die, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All well, these unknowns. There's definitely a better answer, though. Well, they're, they're, that's why I give my opinion. <laughs> I mean, I try to explain what the best, the better best, better, and best answer, if I can. All right, this quarter, the fourth quarter, we're trying to finish strong. We want you to know why you do things in life. So we're talking about playing chess, not checkers, but you got to know why you're doing things because that'll motivate you. So the question I have for you is this. What does winning in retirement mean to you? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Is that something that you care about? What's your thoughts, Alex? So that it's a very common question that I ask clients is like, what do you want your life to look like? And a lot of times they don't know. And and that's okay not to know. We don't have to decide what we're going to do on Mondays or anything, but we need to have some idea of, of what the goal is going to be so that we can begin getting ready for it. It's like, oh, we're going to go on a trip. Okay. okay. Where? How if we know where we're going, then you can plan the path to get there, right? If we don't have a clue where we're going, you just get in the car and drive. You're basically going, oh, just one in circles today. It's like, well, because there was no destination in mind. And when I start talking to people, I don't ask them, like, how much is this going to cost you? And I have ballpark numbers when they tell me, oh, we're going to go on a cruise. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then I'll say, okay, so the first year in retirement, you, it sounds like you're going to spend 25, 30 grand on travel. Mm-hmm. Is that a consistent number or is that year one? Like, let's find out what these decisions that you're thinking you're going to make actually cost. How can, you know, find out what they all mean. Winning in retirement could be as simple as the fact that you know where your check's coming from. It could be as simple as you know you'll have enough to eat and meet your bills and do what you need to do. And that, I think, is the baseline what we have to do with winning in retirement. Winning in retirement could be the fact that, oh, I don't need to do this job anymore. I get to volunteer and do other work. I can travel doing these things for people. I had people that um, retire and they work at camps throughout the year. I had people go overseas to spend two years helping. I believe there's wonderful things people can do with their time. When they set aside money for those retirement years, they can then use their time, which is the most, becomes the most valuable piece in life is time and to basically provide that time for whatever that dream might be. And then I, I've seen scenarios just like that. And then you see the client after they're done working and they're doing things that are more meaningful, right? And their stress levels way down and they almost look younger, healthier. It's just, absolutely. It's great to see it. The sad part is this, we're not saying postpone everything going on now for retirement only. There has to be a balance of today and the future. You need to have today in the future. The problem in America is most people are about today, and the problem is they're going to be paying for it in their future. That's not the thinking we want. We want today to take care of itself, and we want to plan for the future in a position where you'll get to decide and change your mind and decide what that's going to be for you. Very important to have that kind of freedom when it comes to finance. It's such a big deal. Making a decision today can change 
the trajectory of 30 years down the road. And, and most people don't think, oh, it's just 1% extra to my retirement account. I'm not going to miss that. It would, it would be, just think about the idea. If you save a little bit of money for your kid's college and help them a little bit, that puts them in a lot better position when they get out of school um, to be able to move out of the house and be able to have money to put down to buy a house. Imagine they have something versus a negative. Yeah, or negative net worth. I'd like to judge um, people when we first meet them, like how are they doing financially by net worth? That is all your assets listed and all your debts. If you're negative net worth, that's like a scorecard of what's going on. We need to have something show for our money. And so that net worth is truly a barometer for um, financial success for me. And I'm trying to say, well, where are you at right this second? I had to decide real quickly. I like looking at the net worth. So uh, do you ever meet people and they're like, well, this is what I want my life to look like. Mm -hmm. And they see the results, right? The 60, 70 year old folks Mm -hmm. traveling the world. But they didn't see that per- person grind, right? The, that mm-hmm. that retired CEO or you know whatever he he worked, yeah, for that. Like he put work in. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to see the people like how the sausage is made, if you will. Yeah, I had, I had this really special um, executive lady. She uh, did very very well. Worked very very hard. And when she got to fifty eight, fifty nine, she's like, I, I'm done. And for years, I told her she's financially independent. And just whenever she's ready, and she just walked in one meeting and said, "I'm done." And then I said to her, "So, well, what's next?" And then she listed all these things she's going to do by year, and all. she'd already been doing it during her career. When she had time off, she would um, just climb mountains, travel the world, all kinds of amazing things. And now she's going to continue to do that. Um, and even now, after a few years of retirement, she's back um, like um, teaching what she knew in her career to to younger people and mentoring. To me, that's winning and that you're choosing what you're doing, but the finances are taken care of. So the financial planning is is a base underlining, uh, underlying or underlying, you know, something like that. You know, Down there. It's set in, the, <laughs> set in the base. So you can go do everything else and not worry about the money. That's the key thing. If you're worried about the money constantly in retirement, it, that's just not the best way to want to. We, we don't want you to retire that way. You don't want to be a slave to your job, slave to your debt. And a slave to retirement. You, so security check only, you know? Right. You want to be able to to, 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 to be you, whatever that is. Like, I don't know. I mean, you could be a pickleball pro in your 60s, 70s. You could be a charity expert. 80s, you could be the, you know, the bunco queen of the neighbor. You know, whatever it is. We have clients go to, to the Olympics at 90 years old and, and, and compete. I got people do like <laughs> If I told you some of the scenarios I tell my wife, I'm just like, I just had a seven year old tell me that they're doing this. And I'm like, <laughs> life is crazy. Right. So when we're thinking about playing chess, not checkers, and how does it apply to you? You need to think about now and the future and realize sacrifice some now for later. What are some things that people can do that they just need to do? So somebody walks in and say hi to you. Maximize your match. Maximize match. So maximize match at work. What's after that? What kind of things? Um, emergency fund. Emergency funds, Roth IRAs. Simple things for basic planning is having wills, health insurance, life insurance, things that will fulfill the worst case scenario. Then you can go do all these other stuff. I believe paying yourself first and putting money aside for the goals that you have. If you say you want to buy a house, you want to I'll fix up your house, let's start setting money aside for it. I think it's a great thing to do. Yeah, because it's going to cost you money. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I did years ago is I wanted to move. And so what, when I first thought about that idea, I started taking that payment and setting it aside just like I was in that new house so that I could see if I could afford it, if it would fit my lifestyle. And it worked. And over time, I, that money saved, of course, to help me with my down payment. But it taught me a lesson that, that really helped me be able to buy the house I wanted at a young age because I made that a priority to pay that first and then I lived off the rest. Now, that does limit all that free money, but you got to have a balance between now and later. Don't spend all your money to the, to the future. Spend some now. Enjoy some of those things you love now and save for the future. A little bit of both. Yeah, see, but you were super, super committed from an early age. Like when I was yeah. that age, I, I was like, ah, saving money, no way. I'll just marry a doctor. And then and that worked out too. But, you know, <laughs> either way, you got to have a plan, right? If you want that goal, mimic like you're, you're trying it. And like when clients want to move to Florida or change states in yeah. retirement, I go, okay. Go try it. And go rent. Go rent a month. Go try it. See if that's really where you want to be. Don't move everything. 
all in. <laughs> Don't go buy the first thing you see. You got to plan it out, think it through, and see if that's really the lifestyle you want. I'm saving 7% taxes. I'm leaving forever. And then you get there and it's like, oh. I didn't really want that. That's not what I was looking for. So <laughs> Yeah, so the idea is this, is we want to play chess. You want to win the game, but the game is your game. What is winning in retirement to you? You're going to set that that idea, that goal, what it looks like, and guess what? It's going to change. It's going to pivot. It's going to change as circumstances change in life. Uh, when things happen, kids, grandkids, um, good weather, bad weather. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of financial independence, when things change. So you can do what you want. Most people listening won't start doing this, but there's going to be a few of you that are ready to start now, and you got to start now. That's really what you got to do is start right away. Yeah, and if you start today, it's easier than starting tomorrow. All right, so how do you start? Well, at Acres Financial Group, you can go to our website. Acres is A-K-E-R-S financialgroup.com. You go there on the website, you can actually um, sign up or, or basically put your information there and sign up for a free phone call, a meeting in one of our offices. We can meet and get to get, get to know each other, see how we could be a good fit for you. Today we covered playing chess, not checkers. Thank you very much, Alex, for talking through things today. It was fun. I'm glad we didn't talk about gambits or opening moves or king me or king me. <laughs> no, that's checkers. <laughs> checkers is fun, um, but um, chess is a lot more complex because you got to think ahead. So is financial planning. We want you to win in your retirement by taking advantage of the opportunity to begin planning with us at Acres Financial Group. To schedule your free meeting with one of our team of advisors, go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. That's A-K-E-R-S, financialgroup.com. Scroll to the schedule a meeting section and let us know you'd like to schedule your free meeting. Or give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule a free in-person or Zoom meeting with one of our team of advisors. Start planning for your retirement now. Give us a call at 833-946-7384. Thank you for listening. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, and we want you to be winning in retirement. You've been listening to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group. Akers Financial Group offers securities through Arcadios Capital, an SIPC and FINRA member firm. Advisory services are provided through Arcadios Wealth. Akers Financial Group and Arcadios do not share any common ownership. Neither Arcadios nor Akers Financial Group provides tax or legal advice. Advice given on winning in retirement is general in nature, and one should seek further advice from their financial advisor, broker, attorney, and or tax accountant before investing. Be sure sure to read each prospectus carefully to understand all the risks associated with each investment. Examples and scenarios shared are meant to be for illustrative purposes only. Past performance is not indicative of future results.